Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I wanted to discuss the concept of running a large language model locally on your own machine, your own hardware. So I, I will go through the good reasons. I will show you some kind of practical things. I will grab one of the large language models and show you what you can do with it. And then I have some musings and elaborations as always near the end. And of course, as always, if you find value from this video, give me a thumbs up along the way, uh, drop comments, requests, feedback uh, below the video. So let's get started. Four good reasons to run a large language model locally right now, right today. Well, number one is that it's your own. So no matter how awesome is OpenAI, ChatGPT and their APIs, and all the other possibilities you have these days. Still, uh, all of those are kind of uh, maintained and uh, maintained by some other party who has kind of their own ideas where they are taking those. And you, you're kind of following along the ride. But if you take ownership of something and you take something locally, you are free to tinker with it and take it to interesting uh, directions. So you have more kind of uh, things you can play with it. And I think if you're a similar person like I am, that you like to play and tinker and break things and reassemble them, this might be interesting for you. But there is also some other good benefits that come from that one. Now, second reason is that it's going to be free. So if you take ownership, you don't need to pay any subscriptions or, or kind of pay for the use of API or tokens. You just pay for the hardware when you are running it. So it's going to be a very different thing and scalability goes crazy because if it's free, you can use it quite a lot more than if you are paying for it. And uh, for example, for the things where you are not uh, making any money, um, it's more probable to play with kind of free things than, uh, than put money on the table. So of course, if you are monetizing something and as part of that, you need an API, or go for it then it makes sense to spend money to make money but if you are just wanting to play and experiment something free might be really tempting now next uh, thing is that they tend to be more lightweight so if you are running a model locally they are typically not a monster models people are competing how small they can squeeze them and right now you can already take them on a memory thumb drive memory stick, uh, you can put them on Raspberry Pi and have your favorite mascot talk back to you using a large language model. So large language model is kind of relative uh, concept. It's not that large anymore. And final thing is that if you, if you take ownership of these things, you know where the data is stored. So you don't need to worry so much about kind of sensitive data leaking from third parties as has all already happened. And GDPR people like I, who, are, who, who is living in Europe, uh, when you are creating something and it touches even remotely personally identifiable information, it can be a real showstopper uh, if you have to send it to third-party website or third-party database somewhere, if, especially if you don't have agreements to cover the aspects of GDPR or sensitive data in, in common. So uh, your own free, lightweight, and uh, kind of sensitive data compatible. It can be, it depends on how you manage it, but at least you have a say in that. So those are very good reasons to start getting ex excited about locally running the models right now. So how do you do that? I'm glad you asked, let's go there. I'm just picking one of the options you have, but today's option is GPT for all. I'm dropping the link in the description section as always with my videos. So you can follow my steps if you like. But this is GPT for all, so of course you have other options for local models as well. But this one is easy to approach and there is a lot of interesting hooks. I haven't even explored already all of them. So um, there is nowadays a nice install program, graphical user interface, if you like that kind of thing. But what I did, I just uh, cloned the whole repository with Git because I'm a, I'm, I'm a software developer. I'm a tech guy, so that's what I like to do. So I just grabbed it. And then what I did was uh, grab the model. So there is a few options here, but here's the try it yourself part. So I used the direct link. This is about four gigabyte download. So you need some kind of good internet access to be able to download it. Of course, you can use torrent as well. But once downloaded, you can just run it locally and uh, you don't need to go online anymore. 
So using it is extremely simple. It's something like this one. Let, let me show you. Then I get back to this page because there is more interesting information available. So here I'm in my cloned repository and there is the chat folder where you, where you are instructed to put the binaries. And then you have a few scripts for different platforms. So I can grab uh, GPT for all, or quantized Linux, sorry for butchering the pronunciation again. And then I grabbed my model. Sorry, I need to put the minus M parameter and put the model here. And by the way, I have here one crazy unfiltered model uh, that doesn't know what it's not supposed to talk, talk about. So one benefit uh, for the free information to have uh, something that has a little, little bit less of the safeguards or restrictions on top of that. It's also more wild and crazy and doesn't give you so san san kind of safe answers. We could really go deep on the kind of need of restrictions, restraints, uh, kind of sa safeguards. Uh, there's kind of different sides to that question, but topic for another video, another day. Let's not elaborate. Anyways, my model is loaded right now. So the model uh, size is four gigabytes, more or less. It's a marvel that people have been able to kind of fit it in such a small space. It's a fraction of what I have available already on my machine. So uh, here is one of the caveats. I've been speaking boldly that you would be running the model here. And they say that this model is like level 3, GPT-3 level. Well, it kind of is, but it's not nearly as good as uh, ChatGPT with model 3, because ChatGPT is more than just the model. And uh, the training is just not the same and hardware is not the same. So all the benefits I told you about running a local model, they turn around. This model is not nearly as clever as ChatGPT with all its powers. So this is more like your inbred cousin Billy Bob from the mountains missing a few teeth, that kind of level compared to what you have, what you can do with GPT-4, ChatGPT level things. But let's give it a shot anyway. Um, give me example code on um, getting my first PyTest test going on with Python. Yeah, it's not going to do wonders, but it can generate code for you. It can answer questions for you based on the training it already has. So it's a basis, it's a platform, but it's not refined. Of course, as it's yours, uh, feel free to kind of grab it and take it further. You could retrain it, you could fine tune it, you could teach it new things, but it's it's doing something. I know by 2023 standards, this is not much. Uh, if, you, if you ask some more interesting questions, you see the difference more plainly. Let's say, um, give me good instructions on how I could do clean code and refactoring for my dirty Java legacy code base. So with ChatGPT, it would elaborate and give you kind of larger than life answers with this one. Now I'm not holding my breath, but it's still something. It's a basis. Now, as I mentioned, you can yourself make this a whole lot better because it's an open model. It's quite easy to give it a few more spins and uh, make it do what you want, how you want. Like, for example, I've been interested in playing with the simulated personalities and we have none of that available here, but we could have, of course. Now, second thing is that right now the Moore's law is of exponential growth of processing capability. I think it's now pumping uh, quite wildly in the AI scope. So right now, all the AI solutions are on expo exponential growth path. So uh, within a year, the locally run large language models will be crazy. Mark my words, <laughs> remind me in uh, 12 months time. Let's get back to this in 2024 and see if I'm right. But I'm just saying that probably this, will, this scene will explode and you will see a lot more. Also, how about putting some uh, auto GPT on top of that? And because these are cheap and small models, how about having army of your AIs? Have it be orchestrated by um, auto GPT kind of capabilities. So I see a lot of growth happening here in upcoming months. And you might be part of that as well. But I wanted to wrap things up also with something relating to the data and training. 
So first of all, there's a nice technical report describing some details on how it was trained. And by the way, I've been a bit disappointed because um, OpenAI is right now uh, experiencing a lot of competition. So their white papers are getting a bit vague right now. They are not giving out all details like they used to do. Meanwhile, the open models might have uh, a little bit more details available. And I think this is exciting direction because if I want to play with something, I'm very happy to know exactly what it has eaten so I can expand it and understand it. And I'm afraid the commercial models, this might be commercial model as well, but uh, a lot of this is very open. Uh, and the model is, of course, Apache version 2 licensed model. So uh, core is very kind of open source still. So uh, final thing I wanted to show here is a link to all the training data used uh, to make it clever. And sorry, here. So you can actually browse uh, the prompt and response pairs. By the way, if you would like to see me fine tune this model with the data from my own website and blog, uh, let me know. Because it's a little bit of work, but I have kind of I've been getting interested in that one. So if I get multiple requests to do that, to do a video, I might just do that. So let me know in the comment section. Let me know also if you never would like me to do that. But there is a possibility to fine tune with your own data, and you would get the data to the to the similar um, kind of structure, and then you could use your company intranet or your own kind of chat logs uh, from any any place your own video comment section or your own video transcriptions. A lot of options here. But I've been tempted to kind of crawl our uh, company blog website. There's uh, years of blog information and uh, use that as training material to fine tune. And I, I might do that if there is kind of interest in that one. Okay. But anyways, uh, I wanted to wrap up with one cool thing here the Atlas map. So I think this is extremely cool because there is a visualization of the training data. So uh, you can actually find the prompts and questions that have been used for the training. You can similarly find the answers from the uh, other link. Let's see where that was here. Here's the responses. So you can find the responses and you can even cure them and you can just browse this kind of cloud of things. Historic places in Pennsylvania. So I can track that one. And uh, then I'm able to kind of uh, see the prompt and response pair. So all of those, uh, that crazy amount of training that went, you can just uh, visualize it here. Let's see what it knows about Java coding. So we can do a search and we can find some uh, prompts. And uh, here you can see one of the 500 that I'm browsing. And I, I, as you can see, there is a lot of kind of training material, but you can go on this level of transparency. And I really enjoy kind of being able to see what has gone into that uh, machine, especially because, for example, Stack Overflow is uh, kind of uh, getting conscious about people using the material for training. And I'm betting a lot of other resources. So I think in the future, it might be a very interesting field to have transparency on exactly what sources were used. And I like the models where this is clearly documented and I can, I can trace it. And I think in the future, this is getting more and more. I like to think that in the future, this is going to be an interesting topic. Anyways, uh, I hope you got excited like me on capabilities of running a large language model locally. And by the way, whatever you saw me do in command line, you can easily wrap a chatbot or a web interface, or you can put a, a, a speech interface on top of that. So uh, there is easy Python bindings you can use to just tap into the model and do the same things I just did in the tool. So that's very, very interesting thing. And if you are not excited like me, uh, <laughs> I think you should be, because this is all the rage nowadays. So everybody would, should, should be playing with these things a little bit and figuring out uh, their own stances of things. And this is very easy, very free, and very, in that sense, very easy to get started. So uh, as always, let me know what you thought about the video. There's the comment section waiting for your comments. Thumbs up if you didn't do it already and subscribe to my channel for more. And I hope you, you are enjoying this one. I try to keep things short. So let's end this one.
See you in the next one. Bye-bye.